What happens when you make really bold claims in terms of your product, but you fail to deliver when it comes to the actual release? Case in point, today we're going to be looking at the men standing on the stage at the 7900 XTX announcement, AMD's chief architect of marketing and gaming solutions, Frank Azor, and Scott Herkelman, senior VP and general manager with Radeon. First, I want to make it abundantly clear that I really do appreciate these high-ranking employees from companies interacting with us lowly plebs on the internet. It's not every day that I get to reach out and talk with people that stand on the stage and actually get to showcase this really awesome tech that I've been dying to get my hands on for over a year at this point. But at this point, someone's got to call out their BS, and today I've got to talk about the 7900 XTX launch. I'm on the same page as Hardware Unbox and Moore's Law's Dead on this one. I really do think that AMD overstated their product's capabilities and completely underdelivered on our expectations. For those of you that are new to the channel, let's talk about these performance claims. Back in November, AMD CEO Lisa Su came out on the stage and claimed that the RX 7900 XTX has been confirmed to achieve up to 54% performance per watt compared to the 6900 XT. This is a massive achievement, but just as I mentioned in that previous video, it is highly suspicious. But more on that suspicion in just a bit. Next, Herkelman comes onto the stage and claims the XTX hits a 1.5x performance improvement in both Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Watch Dogs Legion compared to the 6950 XT. On top of that, they see a huge 1.7x jump in Cyberpunk 2077. In my previous video, applying these numbers straight up led to some highly optimistic results. In the past, AMD has been very transparent about the numbers it collects, data it presents, and for the most part, accurately depicts the comparison figures across products. Generation on generation, AMD has been spot on with their 50-ish percent performance per watt claims as well. So going into the RDNA 3 announcement and release, we really didn't have a reason to not trust what they were selling. And that brings us to Monday, December the 12th, the 7900 XTX and the XT's review embargo. As I mentioned in my short, AMD completely misses the target regarding two of the four metrics that they present. The most obvious metric is that Cyberpunk 2077 does not, in fact, reach that 1.7x performance improvement from the 6950XT. According to Hardware Unbox's numbers, the 7900XTX achieves a 43% improvement, which is still really good. However, it is challenging to address a 27% performance gap. For me, the glaring discrepancy is the 54% performance per watt claim. After doing some calculations, again using Hardware Unbox's data, the 7900XTX falls way short of expectations at around 28%, nearly half of what was expected. As the reviews continued to pile up over the next few days, my Twitter began to blow up with notifications. Even Jared Walton from Tom's Hardware chimed in with some good observations that might have made some sense, but unfortunately aren't backed up by AMD's own notes in the presentation. And on Tuesday, the news didn't get any better. Hardware Unboxed and Gamers Nexus had less than good things to say about the 7900 XT, with other outlets pouring data onto the dumpster fire of the 7000 series launch. Enter Frank Azor. He retweeted an article from Tech Power Up where he said that the numbers speak for themselves, and I find that very alarming. I hadn't heard from Scott since my Monday tweet, so I figured I'd ask Frank for a little bit of clarity. The first claim he tried to debunk was that there was a Cyberpunk update back in November, and that accounted for the performance improvement, which would have degraded the 1.7x claim to only 1.4. At face value, this seems feasible. We all know that Cyberpunk 2077 has been quite a cluster. But the release notes show no mention of performance improvements outside of frame dips when exiting menus. And that's when I had to call the BS on Mr. Azor. CDPR prides itself in noting updates that improve performance. They would never miss the opportunity to boast about their improvements. So without seeing the receipts from AMD's own labs confirming this observation, any performance improvement would be seen across the entire product line in all of the different data that I've seen, and it wouldn't only be impacting the 6950 XT. The only instance I could think of this is if there was a driver issue between November and December that caused performance regression from the newly launched card. Is that enough to account for 30%? Maybe, but I highly doubt it. 
Editor Turk here, and I decided to go ahead and go the extra mile and compare the 1.6 patch versus the 1.61 patch. I've got a Ryzen 7950X, 6950XT, and sure enough with the 1.6 patch at 4K and high detail settings, I'm getting 52.5 FPS on average when running the in-game benchmark, and upgrading to the 1.61 patch, I'm able to get 52.7 FPS, so effectively no change between the two points, so AMD, you've got to produce the receipts. But that doesn't answer the other question. How about the 54% performance per watt claim? When I reported back in November, I was highly suspicious of how they came to that figure. Lo and behold, AMD has updated their press deck to now include the test setup. And man, oh man, the devil is in the details. For this claim, AMD tested, and I quote, on a system configured with a Radeon RX 7900XTX GPU, driver 31.0.14000.24040, AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, 32GB DDR4 7200MHz, ROG Crosshair 8 Hero Wi-Fi motherboard, set to 300 watts total board power. Wait, what? They overclocked the memory to 7200 mega transfers per second, and they even downwatted the new graphics card to 300 watt total board power? That memory configuration is like the world record at this point, and that wattage is not even a customer shippable configuration. No one would ever run in this particular config. This metric is extremely misleading, and there's no doubt why they scrubbed it from the initial release of those press decks. However, there's no response to the test setup from Frank. Our end note from the announcement state what the test setups are for our announced performance numbers. And in true marketing fashion, we see the predictable pivot. Frank posts a chart from Tech Power Up's review of the ASUS Tough 7900XTX in Cyberpunk 2077 at 4K. I love data, but this data does not address either of the claims at issue here. First up, this data does not include the 6950XT data, so it does not refute the 1.7X performance claim. Second, performance per watt is, as I've said at the beginning of the video, nowhere near 54%. In terms of performance, yes, the 7900XTX is 1.63 times the performance of the 6900XT, but that's not the comparison that they claimed. In Cyberpunk, the 6950XT is 4 frames faster than the 6900XT, or 9%. That's a huge swing and a miss for Mr. Azor. And how about that performance per watt? Well, I kindly refer Frank to AMD's own white paper where they publish how performance per watt is actually calculated. I've talked about it several times here on the channel, so click the card at the top right to get up to speed. Taking this chart specifically into consideration, even this data doesn't even cover the gap. At best, the 7900XTX is hitting 36% performance per watt. And if we stick to AMD's own definition of the performance per watt, this data slaps and confirms only a 23% improvement. Now this isn't a dig at the ASUS Tough card, I actually find it incredible that it's able to get within 1 FPS in this specific game. But the fact remains, the data that Frank's showing here just doesn't back up what he's trying to claim. Again, calling out the BS as I see it. In response, AMD's chief architect for gaming solutions and marketing throws up another outlet's performance numbers for Cyberpunk 2077. Again, cherry picking is a staple maneuver for marketing folks, and this data, again, does not prove what AMD is trying to accomplish. No 6950XT comparison data? <coughs> performance per watt on average is 11%. <coughs> And I hate to say it, but for a publication that has millions of regular readers, PC World's chart is absolute garbage. Even Tom's hardware makes better charts than these. At this point, I've looked at four different sets of data from both prominent YouTubers as well as news outlets, and the data tells the same story. In fact, AMD missed on all the rasterization metrics in their presentation. Watch Dogs Legion only sees a 1.3x performance improvement, which is off by 14%, and Call of Duty is off by 7%, which I can chalk up to being an invalid testing comparison. But you might be saying to yourself, Turk, you're missing the forest from the trees, and I completely get that. Overall, I've got to say the 7900 XTX performs very well, and if you check out some of my posts from the community tab, I think that its price per frame metrics are really good, even if it doesn't match our performance expectations. 
I've reached out to AMD's PR team on several different occasions looking for clarity on charts, asking for product samples, as well as some feedback towards some of the, you know, different performance metrics that they're claiming. And on the majority of occasions, all I get is crickets. I understand I'm a smaller channel and have less impact and reach than some of the bigger names out there, but that doesn't override the fact that AMD is completely deceptive in their announcement and ongoing PR for RDNA 3. I definitely think that there's more to the story here, like a hardware or software issue that just wasn't highlighted back in November when they started getting their PVT samples in the lab. If that's the case, I hope AMD can rectify the situation and issue a public statement with the plan going forward. Until then, my optimism with RDNA 3 is shot, and only AMD can save itself from this self-induced loss of trust. And that's all I have to say about being jebated by Scott Herkelman and co. If y'all want to clear the air, y'all know how to reach out because I definitely want to set the record straight. I want RDNA 3 to succeed like any other engineer that makes products. Still, I favor transparency and truth in my technology. And I hope you guys expect the same. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I hope you have a good one. We'll catch you in the next one.